What am I doing? Proposition 1 right now with 63% compared to against 37%. Now, this proposition will put a cap on increases in property tax, water, and sewer revenue. The Proposition 2 is also winning 59% to 41%. It puts a cap on the city's overall revenue growth. Now, even though both of them are winning, they are contradictory, which means that the one with the most votes will actually be the one to go into effect. Now to District 2, a U.S. Congressional District recently redrawn. Republican Ted Poe at the moment is beating out incumbent Nick Lamson 57% to 42%, but this is the early vote totals only. We're still waiting for more results to come in in that particular race. The uh, Eyewitness News reporter Jessica Willey standing by live at Poe's headquarters in Humble for reaction. Jessica. Well, Dave, certainly those numbers are something to cheer about. Those numbers, of course, in Judge Ted Poe's favor. But remember, Jefferson County has not reported yet. It is usually late to report. Of course, Jefferson County is uh, his opponent, Congressman Nick Lamson's stronghold. That is where he is from. So the judge spent about half of his campaign time there over the last year trying to make inroads. closely watch race district 22 house majority leader tom delay is winning over democrat challenger richard morrison by 56 percent to 40 percent of the vote states they know that will make or break john kerry's run for the presidency congresswoman sheila jackson lee arrived here a short time ago she told us she spoke with the Kerry headquarters just a little while ago and tells us they are preparing for a very long night the democrats believe they got a lot of new voters to the polls and that will benefit their candidate. As for the Harris County Democrats, well, they're all here, and they are settling in, hoping to eventually have a victory party here. Live in Southwest Houston, Janice Williamson, 11 News. Okay, going to take you now and show you a few more of the results that are coming in. This is Proposition 1, the city of Houston. This is the big revenue issue, the tax cap, the revenue proposal. And keep in mind for this, for the proposition to pass, it must get at least 50%. Right now, Proposition 1 is doing that. And the opposing proposition number 2, also with more than 50% of the vote, now we're finally getting some more results in that are not just early voting. 23% of the precincts reporting. Prop 2 has 58% of the vote voting yes. All right, we're going to continue to keep you up to date on these numbers. You'll be watching the presidential election with CBS News here in just a moment. Keep in mind, there's the popular number and there's the electoral vote. They're on the road to 270, so keep that in mind as you watch from the suburban. Jurors in the first Enron criminal trial were allowed to leave early today to vote. They're still deliberating the fate of two former Enron and four ex-Merrill Lynch employees accused of making an off-the-books deal to pump up profits. So, two go fresh into the oven while the other stay sealed in the fridge. Finally, biscuits you bake up two at a time, anytime. How perfect is that? <laughs> New Pillsbury Perfect Portions with the dairy. Republicans just found out they deployed at least 170 young Republicans to that battlefront to fight the campaign there. We're live in Southwest Houston. I'm Kim Alvarado, Booth, Local 2 News. All right, Kim, thank you very much. And that'll be our last update for the 9 o'clock hour. We'll see you for Local 2 at 10. From NBC News. Vision 2004, Election Night. Live from our election headquarters on Democracy Plaza, here is Tom Brokaw. Good evening once again. You want reality television? This is reality television. Someone tonight, before this night is over, or before tomorrow morning is over, will be voted off the island. Will it be George W. Bush or John Kerry? We simply can't say, and here's why. These are the states, and it is just simply too close to call, and these powerful states. Ohio, now 35% of the vote has been counted so far. You can see a narrowing vote difference between the two candidates, blue for John Kerry, red for George Bush. Uh, what's Let's keep your house so clean. <laughs> well, first of all, we don't let you all come visit. <laughs> <laughs> Second, you know, I shower at the gym, I dine out, and when my dates go well, I can usually get 
muy bien en su cita anterior, así es de que es hora de ir a ver al galanazo, vamos a ver si él opina exactamente lo mismo, porque ya ven que luego dice ya una cosa y el otro dice otra. Aquí está Héctor, qué cara, qué cuerpo, qué caramba es esto. Hola, me llamo Héctor, tengo 23 años y soy troquero. Esta es mi segunda cita, en mi primera cita conocí a Jessica. Well, only Sprint got rid of them. Check it out. With the Sprint PCS Fair and Flexible plan, 100 extra minutes never cost more than $10. Other plans charge at least $40, so talk all you want. Saving money. Anyone interested? Plans start at $35. Sprint PCS, now that's better. Um, I'd like a Fritos Chili Cheese Wrap, please. What? The wrap. You get a wrap? Yeah. That's what girls get. What? Girls get wraps. Can I get a uh, diet strawberry limeade, please? Uh, with two cherries. Fritos chili cheese wrap. Sonic's got it, others don't. Chili, cheese, onions, and crunchy Fritos corn chips all wrapped up to go. It's not just good, it's Sonic good. Mmm. This is like cute best man good. No, this is like burning this dress good. <laughs> Never having to stand in line at the ladies' room, good. Mm. Getting these shoes off, good. Oh, getting put with an usher who's not shorter than you, good. Did you see him? <laughs> Rich, creamy Yoplait yogurt. It is so good. Not catching the bouquet, good. <laughs> Fox 26 investigates ears. News that works for you. Spanish translations are brought to you in partnership with KLAT La Tremenda, 1010 AM. The six-speed, 270-horsepower Acura TL adjusts to the way each individual accelerates, brakes, and takes on the curves. Because no two drivers are alike. The Acura TL, a higher form of performance. Houston had three propositions on the ballot today. The first two are aimed at reigning in Houston city government. Proposition one limits annual increases in city property taxes and utility rates. Now, Mayor Bill White supports Proposition one. And at this point, it would appear that voters listen to his suggestion. They, as you heard earlier, battleground states are very important tonight, and so could the courts and the judges in places like Florida, Ohio, and Pennsylvania. Remember Florida four years ago? Hanging chat, lingering confusion. It could happen again, this time in Ohio. Our law is very clear uh, with regard to punch cards and chads and recounts, uh, but it is possible that we won't know the uh, outcome in Ohio uh, for this period of 10 days. 10 days? especially since battleground states like Ohio are so tight and full of potential legal issues. In Ohio, a lawsuit has already been filed on behalf of voters who did not receive absentee ballots on time. In another issue, a federal court rule today, Republicans can challenge the qualifications of voters at the polls. There's nearly 23,000 potentially suspect voters. All of this going on as lawyers there, like this one, monitor precincts in Ohio for problems. If she's at the wrong table inside that polling place, she's not going to be able to vote. And what about Florida? Lines were long today, but problems were isolated. There were technical problems with voting machines, and some people never received absentee ballots. Election officials there, once again, on the defense. We really made several attempts to get them there. And, and in Pennsylvania. There were complaints voting machines arrived at precincts today with votes preloaded. Election officials later said the votes were from previous elections. And there are late reports tonight out of Philadelphia that a judge there has issued an order preventing absentee ballots there from being counted until tomorrow morning. So this thing possibly far from over. Steve Simon, WB, 39 News. See, college kids aren't the only ones who do overnighters, that's for sure. Uh, uh, briefly, we touched upon the Ted Poe-Nick Lamson race a little while ago. We heard from Katie McCall up in Humble, but we had a little problem going to Beaumont. All right, we're going to go back to Beaumont. Here's Michelle McCallum. She's with Lamson's party. Michelle. 
high. The party is in full swing here. There's lots of people, there's lots of food, there's lots of music, and it's really an upbeat and exciting place to be here in downtown Beaumont. And joining me now to talk more about tonight's festivities is none other than the congressman himself. Thanks for joining us tonight. My pleasure. Thank you. Some early voting numbers are in. What is your reaction to those numbers? Well, it shows that I am behind. Uh, I think it's 52, 46 or something of that sort. Uh, they are, they re reflect the early voting uh, pattern. Uh, we'll have to wait and see if, uh, if that's going to change. Certainly, I'd like to see it uh, higher at this point. The race was one that uh, was intended for me not to be able to win from the beginning. We knew that we had an uphill battle uh, on, on this. The people that have turned out to work for me have been incredible. Uh, and to have run the race in the manner in which we did, uh, try our best to uh, stay on the top of, uh, uh, of this heap and in the, in, in the adversity that came out in some very ugly advertisements uh, has been difficult. Uh, but I can always say that we fought the fight, we did a, a, a great effort, and uh, I'm still hopeful that we're going to see a trend that will turn back around and show us the numbers that we want to see. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Of course, the early vote is still early with the early voting. There's lots more to come. And, and people here are hoping that the party atmosphere will continue, and it will continue throughout the night. Reporting live from Beaumont, I'm Michelle McCallum, WB39. Tonight we're going to look at some local news. Remember those turtles we told you about last night? They were stolen from Moody Gardens. Well, they are back home tonight, and police have made an arrest. But first, you haven't seen enough numbers, have you? More numbers to crunch on this election night, 2004. showroom and our multi-million dollar inventory. You'll be glad you did. We came out here, we're looking for some furniture for our living room and our bedroom, and uh, they took us around, showed us what they had, we found what we wanted, they uh, got us the price we needed, we financed the sport right away, and we're going to have the furniture in our home in about an hour. And by right, we have instant financing, zero down, zero interest, and no payments for up to one year. We'll beat our competitors in price and quality. Hey, 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 by right furniture, best prices. <laughs> protects your hair against damage, you can see it on a night of serious styling. I see you, baby. I it, babe. Pantene Pro-V Shampoo and Conditioner protects your hair while styling. This pro-vitamin formula makes it ten times stronger against breakage. I see you, baby. Here's the Pantene Proof. You, You'll want to see and be seen. Guaranteed. Pro-V Shampoo and Conditioner. Pantene Protection. That's the beauty of health.
other news of the day right now as we check out more of those numbers over there. All day and into the night, U.S. forces have been pounding rebel hideouts in Fallujah and the neighboring city of Ramadi in Iraq. The air and ground attacks come after a weekend of deadly assaults on U.S. Marines and other troops in Iraq. Insurgents are trying to regain control as we move closer to the January elections in Iraq. Well, William Johnson, an electrician at Moody Gardens, has been arrested on felony theft charges. This is an update on a story we brought you last night. Now, police say he is taking res or he is responsible for taking 15 exotic tortoises from the park last weekend. A private collector who bought the protected turtles called police after seeing news reports right here on WB39. William Johnson, the 60-year-old suspect, apparently worked at Moody Gardens faces probation to two years in jail if he is convicted. Our special election edition of the WB39 News at 9 continues right after this break. We tried for six months to sell our home with a real estate agent. And we saw a buy owner ad. The buy owner rep answered all of our questions completely. We got our asking price. And we saved over $25,000. This comes around only once in a blue moon. It's the Moonlight Madness Sale, Saturday only at Bassett Furniture Direct. First, take 25% off furniture in every department. And for one day only, get Bassett Bonus Bucks. Good for instant savings of up to $400 store-wide. Plus, make no payments with no interest for 12 months. That's one full year. The Moonlight Madness Sale, 12 hours only and only at Bassett Furniture Direct. Gonna take you for a ride on a hot Texas night, get ready. Loving your Ford, keep you coming back for more, so steady. Ford and Texas, Ford and Texas, go hand in hand. Look again, my friend, you won't need all the rest. Ford is the best in Texas. Can you hear me now? Good. Yeah. Good, good. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Good. We ask the same question over and over. Can you hear me now? So that you don't have to. Good. Verizon Wireless has fewer dropped calls than any other wireless network. Good. Can you hear me now? It's what makes us the most reliable wireless network in the nation. Now. 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 Can you hear me now? Now. Can you hear me now? Good. Verizon Wireless. Can you hear me now? We never stop working for you. Good. We had our home with an agent for over nine months. And we finally got fed up and called by owner. By owner pre-qualified potential buyers right over the phone. We sold in two weeks and saved over $16,000. Thanks, Thanks, by owner. Thanks, by owner. Take a look at the numbers from District 2, where former Judge Ted Poe is running against incumbent Nick Lampson. There you have the, Again, these are just early numbers that we have in right now, most of them from Harris County. Conceded the record. Poe is very well known for his time on the bench. Though early, I wonder what former Judge Poe thinks about him. Let's 39's Katie McCall is with Mr. Poe at his campaign headquarters. Katie? That's right, Sherry. Standing with me is Judge Ted Poe. Give me your reaction to these early numbers. You probably are ecstatic to see them. Glad to see it. The voting returns in Harris County have been very tremendous, and we're just waiting for the votes from Liberty County and Jefferson County, but Judge, it looks great. Judge, tell us what you think the difference is between you and Nick Lamson and why these numbers are as they are. Well, the people here are ready for a change. They're also ready for a representative to say the same thing at home and vote that way in Washington, D.C. I think it has to do with leadership and, and conservative principles that I stand for. Okay, thank you for your time, Judge. Thank That's you. all here from Humble Reporting Live, Katie McCall, WB39 News. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, Judge. As we just showed you, the race for District 2 quite competitive at this point. 
Dean incumbent Nick Lampson spent the day stuffing for last-minute votes. He spent the early part of the evening with supporters, as we showed you live a minute ago. He is still with He them. is the incumbent, but he is facing an uphill battle against former Judge Ted Poe. This district now runs from Northeast Harris County to Beaumont, and uh, Poe was winning. All right, we're going to let you take a look at those numbers, but we're going to go back to CBS right now, and they are declaring Kerry the winner in Pennsylvania. They'll bring you up to date on the presidential race, and then we'll be back here to bring you up here. This is the one uh, race that redistricting did affect in the Texas House. Uh, it made this traditionally Democratic district much more Republican, and as you can see, Ted Poe may be benefiting from that. And our local news reporter Nancy Holland is live with Ted Poe and his supporters in Humboldt. Nancy. Well, Lisa, there is a little bit of disappointment here that the numbers are coming in so slowly, but so far the people here like what they are seeing. This district is a little like the country itself. It is deeply divided, and this is definitely the Republican part of the district. Ted Poe knows that he must do well here. He got here about 8 o'clock this evening. He began circulating through the crowd, shaking hands. He said that he wanted to go up and shake hands individually with all the people who have worked so hard. He has needed to carry this part of the district strongly, and he certainly hopes that he has done that. He has been watching those numbers closely all evening. I am greatly indebted to all of you. As you know, uh, the votes from Harris County, early voting and absentee have come in. We're doing real well, and we're waiting on Harris County. Uh, we are just being told uh, from our affiliate in Beaumont that they understand that Nick Lampson may be conceding even as we speak. So we need to go check on that very quickly. But so far, uh, that has, news has not spread here, but that would be tremendous news for the Pope people. Back to you, Greg and Lisa. All right, Nancy, thanks. And Nick Lamson is the incumbent, if that's the case. We'll see if they've heard it over there where Doug Miller is. He's with Nick Lamson and his supporters in Beaumont. Doug? Uh, yes, indeed. We can confirm that just a few moments ago, Nick Lamson stepped up to the podium here in Beaumont, and after eight years of serving in Congress, he has conceded and congratulated Ted Poe on his victory. He is now addressing his uh, supporters here in Beaumont, and we're going to listen in for just a moment and hear what he has to say. Tonight, your support here in Jefferson County has been shown at more than two to one. Uh, that's incredible. Uh, the work that my staff has done uh, both the campaign staff and the congressional staff and with each and every one of you raise your hand if you've had any role in either of my opponent's uh, territory uh, we have had a very good showing here in Jefferson County and I believe that Jefferson County can actually pull me through this uh, they are the reason I ran Again, Congressman Williamson conceding defeat tonight to Ted Poe. Now, this has been called one of the most expensive and competitive races in the Houston area, with both candidates spending in the millions in this race. We are live in Beaumont. I'm Rachel McNeil, Local 2 News. Thank you, Rachel. Now we have a closer look at why Lamson has conceded tonight. New numbers coming in. Let's take a look at those. 17% of the precincts reporting. Ted Poe definitely in the lead. 59% of the vote to Nick Lamson's. 40%. So from the Lampson camp, we turn now to the Ted Poe supporters. Local 2 reporter Robert Arnold live in Humble Harris County with reaction there. Robert? Well, news just, just coming in from the Lansing camp has hit the Poe supporters like a lightning bolt through this area. They have been crowding in all night. The cheers have not died down the least bit. This is such a crowded election night party. It's hard to even walk at times. And every single person here said they never had any doubt from the beginning that their candidate would unseat the incumbent. As former Judge Ted Poe walked into his election night party, he was greeted by deafening cheers, hugs, handshakes, and an incredibly energized group of supporters. I want to thank everybody for coming out in this weather. The battle for this newly drawn congressional district is expected to go down to the wire. The key for Poe to win is whether he made a big enough dent in Congressman Nick Lampson's Jefferson County power base. We'll do very well in Jefferson County. We're trying to get uh, at least 40% of the vote in Jefferson County. And if we do that, we'll do very well across the district. We talked to Joe Crabb a little bit, and he said that, that he thought we had it. <laughs> People, he knows how they think, he knows how they act, and uh, he knows how they react. While the air in the Poe camp may be charged with optimism, even the former judge himself was still mildly cautious when addressing his supporters. So we're going to be here a while. I want all of you to uh, enjoy the festivities tonight, but I want to thank all of you for coming out. And a little bit later, we'll have a little longer conversation together. 
Well, no more need for cautious optimism in the camp. Now everybody here just ecstatic after hearing about Congressman Nick Lampson conceding the race. And now that conversation he plans to have with supporters will definitely be a happy one. We're live with the Poe Camp here in Humble Harris County. I'm Robert Arnold, Local 2 News. Thank you, Robert. So exactly the result that was uh, hoped for when the district was redrawn, that a Republican would go to Congress in Lampson's stead. That's right. In the race for District 22, a Sugar Land lawyer hoped to unseat one of the...